Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Archihax. So recently I came across this amazing portfolio as a part of our portfolio review series and shared an amazing set of projects and exemplary drawings. So I figured I'll share with you guys, with her permission, of course. And in addition to that, she also just told me that she got a job with a portfolio. So let's take a look at how she started off and some of the points that are given her so that you can use it in your own portfolio. If you're a big fan of rendering, I think you should stay till the end of the portfolio where she has a whole section dedicated for hyper-realistic interior renderings. So with that being said, let's check it out. Okay, so I've been taking a look at Rulai's portfolio as a part of our portfolio review. And this is a really good example of what an employable portfolio looks like. So I would like to go over that with all of you. So Rulai, would you like to um, quickly go to the next page? Yeah, the overall impression that I get from Rulai's portfolio is extremely professional, minimal. Um, I, I thought it looked amazing. So when we take a look at resume side, I can see that everything is well organized. There's like a good hierarchy between typography. Icons are used to like highlight the important sections. And on the right side, table contents is quite minimal. It shows you a quick summary of the projects that um, you worked on. So I thought that was really good. Um, and then let's go to the next page. Um, so yeah, one thing I just pointed out to Rula was that the text on the top left corner is disappearing a little bit because of the white background. So one thing you could do obviously is to maybe move the text over to the top right corner where the white space is and then make the text black. But I'm really enjoying this like, you know, overlaid look with the plans, um, darker background with white lines. Honestly, I feel like darkening the sky might be the best thing to do here. It'll be more seamless that way. Now let's go to the next page. Um, yeah, I thought this page was really interesting too. I love more detailed um, drawings in this page. So I always go from like the top level view into the detailed view. So like you're doing exactly that. So like <laughs> I have very little to complain. Um, maybe okay. one thing might be that the way these callouts are coming out might be a little bit funny. Okay. And, um, yeah, the detail, the D1 detail, I feel like it's a little bit hard to see. I, honestly, I missed that in the first look. But um, yeah, I think things are fading out a little bit. It's, and then it's like the same fading out thing that we had on the cover page. But honestly, it's a minor Ooh. detail. And uh, I've, as I mentioned earlier, like, you know, these are very nitpicky things. It's probably not going to affect you in like a large way. So just take these as like a grain of salt. And uh, yeah, but awesome. This is great. I love it. Yeah, let's go to the next page. I love the way you're utilizing the negative space to place like additional contents like plants, diagrams here. Um, I thought it was weird that there's a little bit of overlap happening on the left column. When um, on the third point under the monolithic yeah. structure, there's a, yeah, the graphic is overlapping with the text. So I would say watch out for that. And um, using arrows to um, align exonometric is something I've never seen before. <laughs> Quite interesting. I guess it's like a combination of like a diagram as well as exonometric. But um, I think conventionally, what people would do is to create a um, like dotted line that goes straight up, kind of like indicates where the, each corner is supposed to line up. But I think you understand what I'm talking about, right? You know, it's like a dotted line yeah, at the edge. Yeah. I think that'll make things a lot more clear. Okay. So watch out for those things. Um, and on the right side, um, I thought it would be interesting, or I thought it would be a good idea to align your diagrams to center of your rendering. I see that it's like a little bit to the right side. Um, but yeah, that's like a, another OCD side of me complaining. But honestly, great diagrams, great rendering. I love it. Thank you. And then moving on to the next page, I think this page is like working out quite well. And you're actually doing the thing that I was suggesting earlier on for the first project. It's the screen technique. So that looks good. Honestly, I missed the central pavilion text here. Did you mean to place that in there? Yes and no. It was on the render, so I just kept it there. But if it does, I, I think it, I would rather take it out now. Okay, okay. I mean, I know that was unintentional, but there's something about it. It looks like <laughs> some sort of introduction video or something like that. Um, if you had more of those, at least like two or three, I think it would have looked more intentional. 
one okay. on its own looks a little bit like a mistake. Okay. Yeah, but cool. Great rendering. What software are you using to render this? Uh, CBS Max usually, and most of the things are built in Revit and imported. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's awesome. And uh, as for the diagrams, um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, the diagrams are mainly photoshopped. So mm -hmm. most of them are only photoshopped, AutoCAD, and then photoshopped all with them. My goodness, that's impressive. I can't believe it. <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right, great. Yeah. Yeah, I love the way you're using these icons. It's really clear. Um, only thing I thought it was like kind of raised my eyebrows. Not that it's bad. I thought it was like very different and unique about your portfolio is the way you like pointed out the material of the wall. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional again, if it was like already in there and you just like cropped it in. That was intentional based on the idea of the project because the project works on sensory design. So I just wanted to show, for example, a material that was used in what context it was used as in tactile concrete or just to mm. explain a bit more the project. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, see, um, that wasn't quite too clear to me. Um, but maybe one way to kind of like really drive that point home could be by using a consistent icon. So I see that you're, you have these four senses that are listed on the left column. Yes. And what if you could take this touch icon and then place it next to the tactile concrete? Um, I mean, okay. I don't exactly understand what your project um, is about, how it works, but I thought that might be one way to kind of like really keep that throughout the project. And uh, I got it. let's see if that happens again in the next page and see if we can bring that icon up again. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. I see. <laughs> it doesn't quite happen again, but um, no. <laughs> yeah. If, if your project was, you know, focusing on the sensory experiences, I'm sure there will be opportunities to bring that up again. So, and like, since you already have all the icons, you already have renderings and plans. It might be just a matter of like making little call outs and then just labeling it. Like this is touch okay. what happens with water, um, smell from grass or yeah, stuff like that on the plan and yeah. the rendering. Yeah, it's all there for you. So yeah, just a little bit more to go. All right, should we move on? Yeah, I thought this spread was quite interesting. Um, I guess like you're not short on like the page limit. So you're like, um, you can spare this kind of page. So yeah, I thought this was an interesting transition. But um, yeah, I love the way the portfolio has like almost two parts. Like first part is like architectural and second part is like um, all focused on interior design and it's reflected in the layout as well. And the style of the rendering completely changes. Now it's hyper-realistic. And um, yeah, like it was quite evident to me that like you have excellent rendering skills based on these renderings. So yeah, you know, I, I think you're doing a justice to your skills and your experience. So I think that's really good. Um, I'm guessing you're also using 3D Max for these renderings, is that correct? Yes, for the interiors, mainly 3DS Max with V-Ray or Corona. Mm -hmm. Nice, scope of the work. I'm just taking a closer look at the labels now. I see, so these are all different projects, right? Yes, they're all different and most of them were worked on and some of them were executed as well, so from mm -hmm. project proposal to execution as well. Wow. I, I wonder if we should show that off somehow. Like, and I'm guessing these are professional works, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think it might be worth maybe pointing that out as like a, one of the bullet points, like along with like um, scope of the work, location, um, office, mm -hmm. um, because... Um, this portfolio is targeted for getting a job and having previous experience, well, even though you already mentioned that pretty cl clearly in your resume, um, I think employers would like to know which one is done professionally so that, um, yeah, they can really vouch on that. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Um, I thought the um, gutter space was a little bit too big. Gutter space is like the middle of the spine okay. of the book. And um, it gets a little bit, it feels a little bit crammed to the margin, which is the edge of the page. So yeah, I wonder if it's just a matter of like moving both contents closer together 
I'm sure you had good reasons to do this. It looks more like a magazine, like a physical book requires a big gutter. But um, since I'm guessing you're delivering this as a digital copy, um, I think you can ignore those kind of um, publication rules. But yeah, okay. amazing. This is this was um, such a eye candy. Like overall, like really displays your skills. I think you're really employable. I think only difficulty that we're having right now with is the job market. And I feel like that is really no fault of your own. So I would say keep applying. And um, a general tip for everyone is that um, if you're applying for like a um, job in a difficult season, or if it's your first job, um, don't give up. I would just say like, you know, apply to 10 places every week. Just set that as your goal. And I'm sure good things will happen eventually. Um, yeah. So um, about all I have to say, but um, did you have anything specific you would like me to address? Uh, not in particular. I mean, it's it's good enough what you've mentioned that we're more motivated to keep on going with this. So hopefully I will get there at some point. Yeah, no, I'm, I have like so much confidence that you'll get there. This is one of the um, <laughs> yeah, better projects, uh, portfolios I've seen so far. Try it out. Okay, I'll give it a try then. Perfect. Thank you so, so much, honestly. Great <laughs> no, help. So really no problem. <laughs> I wish I could help you more. Um, but yeah, it's the least I can do. No, that's, that's more than enough. So from now on, it's up to me to keep going. Okay, sounds <laughs> good. All right. Best of luck, Rula. And um, yeah, keep me posted on the Thank results. You. Hey, thanks for making it this far into the video. I hope you really liked the portfolio and if you had any constructive criticisms, make sure to leave it in the comments. Also, if you would like to book a session similar to this one, make sure to check the link in the description. Until next time, take care.